Hello and welcome, my name is Jesse Warden. Today we are gonna do a crash course on Node or NPM, Bower and Grunt. And at the end of this presentation, I'll basically show you how you don't have to do any of this, okay? But my assumption is, is that you're a JavaScript developer who's probably inherited a project from some other guy and you have no experience in any of this. Or B, you're actually starting a project and you hear all about these things and you're trying to put them together and figure out where they fit together and how you can make it work and what really is the value of all these tool sets doing all these things that have nothing to do with writing code in the browser, right? Or maybe they do. So that is what we're gonna cover. We're gonna go over um, basically all three items and show you some examples of installing it. I'm gonna do two example projects so you can get an idea of how they work together, which really just scratches the surface. But the point is, is that a lot of times the way you go about these things is you spend a lot of time in the beginning of the project and you never touch it again. You might run the commands, but you don't actually touch the source files that make all these things work together, right? It's it's kind of the 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 initial tool set of your build. So it's sometimes hard to remember because you do them in the beginning of the project and then months later you never touch them again. You completely forgot. And the only times you ever go back in is if they break, right? So it can be a little challenging to get it up. So this is just a crash course to get you through that, okay? So why, why, why all these things? Why, what does this have to do with JavaScript? Well, there's two, two things you need to remember, okay? Number one is, is that JavaScript's been around for a long time. It's also evolved for a long time. Additionally, it's also somewhat has a huge open source community around it or a contributing mechanism. The, the specs are public, the libraries are public, people from the browser vendors try to push a lot of code public. They work on things in, in secrets and then all of a sudden they make them open source. So there's this huge amount of code around solving many of the same problems different ways or multiple problems in a variety of ways. So what happens is, just like Java, is you have a huge set of libraries to compensate for certain holes in functionality. And there's no, no easy way to manage that, right, until now. Ways of automating build systems, builds get very complicated. We need to automate these things in certain ways. We need to make sure certain steps occur in certain order. We need to help you know, continuous integration really work as advertised. So things like Ant, Make, Ruby's, you know, Rake came about, and JavaScript has the same thing now with Grunt. And they all run on this thing called Node. So what is Node? Most people, when they, they first heard about Node, it was a new server technology platform. So we had Java, then we had Python, and then we had Ruby on Rails. And now we have Node, and it allows us to write JavaScript on the server. Oh my God, like what's going on? It has IO, and people make fun of it. What does that really mean? Well, it's unfortunate that Node's PR, a lot of it has been doing a lot of cool server-side stuff, but that's not really what most JavaScript developers who spend 90% of their time writing client-side code, that's JavaScript, HTML, CSS, not server-side code. They use Node as a engine for their development workflow. It has nothing to do with the server. Now, yes, they'll run unknowingly sometimes local servers, right, using Node, but that's not really what most of the, the people talk about Node for. It's really just the underpinning engine of making all this Bower and Grunt and Yeoman stuff and development workflows happen, okay? So Node is a gateway to all these other tool sets, right? It's really just the underpinning engine. The most important thing is that it runs on your machine, in your terminal, right, whether you're using Mac or PC, and it forms the engine where you issue commands to and it helps you write JavaScript better, right? That's really what Node is for. What is Bower? Where, where does Bower come about? Well, Bower is also a client package managed system, right? So we install Node specifically to get NPM or Node Package Manager. Bower is also a package manager for client-side code. Well, what's the difference? I thought we have Node. Can't we install you know packages through Node? Yes, you can, but here's the evolution that's happened over the years. Node is more of a server side bent, right? You can install it locally and install local servers and run those and test those in development, staging, production environments, but that's not really what most JavaScript developers using these tools care about. What they care about is basically a Maven version of JavaScript. They need a way to manage these dependencies for a variety of developers with specific versions easily, right? And efficiently so everyone else can install what they need, when and where, without having to check in thousands and thousands of files, which a lot of these JavaScript projects are starting to get. Makes your SVN repos huge. It makes merging unnecessary things ridiculous. And so that's why we, we just check in the, the files that designate, these are the libraries I need and whatever else. Okay, but again, doesn't Node do that? Well, yes, but it has some server-side baggage, right? So it's kind of bent to server and client, right? It has a lower level engine to allow you to access certain things on machine and server. Bower's not, doesn't care about any of that. Bower just says, I need these libraries and these dependencies configured this way here. That's it, that's that's what Bower's for. So does something 
small and does it well. That's really what Bower's for. So it's kind of the evolution of package management for client side developers, people like us, right? So that's Bower. So where Node uses a package.json, Bower uses mostly a Bower.json, okay, to configure those things. Now, Node can configure everything, including Bower and Grunt, but you usually use them side by side. Now, the third part of the puzzle is Grunt. Grunt is the task runner. He is the guy that basically builds your whole thing, everything from JS linting to JS minification to transpiling and compiling, uglifying and unit testing and integration testing and deploys, blah, blah, blah. Like it does all that stuff, does them in certain orders, and you can configure that to your heart's content. 90% of your time, I'll use made a percentages, 90% of your time is spent inside of Grunt, not Node, not package.json, not about JSON, but grunt.js, configuring how Grunt runs and how the various tasks run. That's where you spend most of your time. So Node and Bower should be milliseconds to minutes of your time throughout the day. And the initial project might spend a couple hours setting them up, but that's it. You'll never touch them again. Most of your time is spent inside the Grunt.js, configuring it and making sure your JavaScript project works. You automate the task, you iterate on that for a while. Eventually, it's good, it works, you don't have to touch it ever again, and you go to writing code every day, utilizing these tasks inside of Grunt. Now, when a new developer comes on, they'll install Node, Node will install Bower, they'll, Node will also install Grunt and Grunt CLI. They'll run npm install in their project and install all their dependencies, and they're good, they're done. They don't have to do any of that stuff that you actually set them up to do. And that's how it's supposed to work, right? So again, why do we need all this stuff? What, what's the point? Well, most languages like Visual Studio, inside of .NET Framework and WPF, and some Java toolings and things like that, they already have all this stuff built in. Now, obviously, Maven has to be configured and Ant, you know, depending on how you do it, Ruby Rake with certain Ruby libraries and whatever else, but many, many other languages have package management systems. Whether they're a command line like Ruby and Python or Lua, they have ways of saying like, I need this particular library with this particular dependency. I don't want to have to check it in. I just want to define the dependencies as metadata and have something go get it, right? So it's, it's something that's already used in other languages and it's proven its worth. Same thing with automated task runners, right? Grunt, Ant, Ruby Make, everything else. JavaScript is now getting to the point where we're building large applications. We're, we have a large community. We have a significant amount of libraries with certain versions that need to be configured in certain ways for both development, local development, and production staging builds. So these tools have evolved because the problems were already solved in other languages and platforms. They've naturally just migrated over to JavaScript, okay? so. They're still evolving as they do, but they do work. And that's why people are using them today in projects, so they do work. Right? They work as advertised, it's good enough. But there's always wonderful additions, okay? And mainly, where it comes from is the actual platform's cool. It's the plugins and templates built on top that are awesome. And because JavaScript has a large community, it's a very exciting time to be in it and see those things. And I have, really, you can contribute if you'd like, but uh, they've done a lot of the hard work for you, which is fantastic. You know, college kids who are single have a lot of time on their hands, oh, good for it, man, it's awesome. Thank you for your hard, hard work. How does all of this stuff work? Can you give me a run through, Jesse? I'm just trying to get a, a handle on how do I get these things started? Sure. I'm gonna do a simple node install. We're gonna do a simple install of a package. I'm gonna do a simple Bower install. We'll do a Bower install of a package so you see the difference, the evolution. And then we're gonna do a Grunt project to show you how Grunt can run a task. And then we use all three together in a TypeScript project. So you can see the concept of transpiling and Grunt plugins and blah, 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 okay? So first things first, let's go to, let me shrink this browser down so you can actually see it on the screen. We're gonna type in node, node, what is node? Okay, node.js, hey look, it's my face. Now keep in mind, speaking of which, I'm glad Google brought this up. That wasn't planned at all. So I built a cheat sheet, as you can see, to help give you a crash course in this. So you can print it out on your wall, hopefully you can look at it once, never remember it again. Three months go by, you have to start another project or even a year and you're like, what? Oh yeah, right. And these commands hopefully will still help you, right? So it just gives you a crash course because it's hard to memorize this stuff if you don't do it every day. So I made a cheat sheet just to get you started, okay? This doesn't have all the commands you need. This has enough to get you started to actually build and install your, your packages. At that point, you're gonna spend most of your time in the grunt JS docs or you're gonna generate it, which we'll talk about later. So you can see those cheat sheets there in the YouTube description. And I also have a blog post going over this stuff in detail, okay? So when we go to nodejs.org, what we're looking for is specifically npm inside there, okay? And I'll show you the API docs. We're just gonna do the install, which will detect what OS we are in and download the file so we can install it, okay? And if you go to node.js, it has the npm registry, right? Which is part of node, part of the node package. So when we install node, it'll give us npm, okay? Make sense? 
All this stuff's gonna run on our terminal, but we need it to run on our terminal with all kinds of neat permissions to write files and modify things. So that's why you install an executable to do JavaScript development, okay? So I'm gonna run this guy. I'm gonna install it, yes, all users. Now, you can see it'll automatically add it to our path by default. If it doesn't, you need to do it manually. It's really frustrating, but hopefully even on Mac and PC and even Linux, I believe, it will install that for you, okay? If you're in Linux, you're probably smart enough to figure that out yourself. My daily Ubuntu saying. I love just saying that word. All right, so now we have Node installed. What does that mean, we have Node installed? Well, if you open this little terminal window, you can configure it to be any color, any font you want, whatever else. I'm gonna use the default. On Mac and PC, it's about the same. You should be able to type in, regardless of where you start, what directory you start in your terminal, npm. And it should print all this stuff out and say, hey, if you want to use Node Package Manager, you should do this stuff, okay? If it doesn't do that, you need to go to Stack Overflow and check out some of the links on how you debug most of these common missing path issues. Very common. Most of the installers fix them nowadays. But if you do run into it, that's fine. Go here and Stack Overflow has some really good answers that helped me in the past, okay? So that's Node. Cool, so we have npm install. What can we really do with it? Well, as per the cheat sheet, most people usually just do npm install or npm install of certain other things. So for example, Bower and Grunt run on it. Okay, npm install g Bower. Now why, what is the g for? g just means globally. You want to install it everywhere so everybody can use it. Why would you not install it globally? Because some people want certain versions that work certain ways only in certain folders with certain permissions. We don't really care about that right now. We just care about, I want to use Bower. Cool, done. NPM or Node Package Manager will go. Now, you'll get this common error if you have permission issues or you haven't set folders to have certain permission issues for super users. What does that mean? It just means that most Unix-based systems and terminal will not allow you to do certain things unless you have super user permissions, right? In my case, I do not. So you'll see a lot of these commands without sudo, but if you put sudo in front of all of them, you can get around that. Now there's a way to get rid of this, but I'm not gonna go over it. I just, I'm gonna assume that you're gonna either A, have permissions, or B, just put sudo in front of everything. Enter your password, and then you never have to do it again, usually. Unless you change folders with different permissions. So when you do node package install, it'll go through there, get all the requirements that Bower needs to operate, and all the things that he needs, download it, install it globally, and now you can run Bower anywhere, such as Bower. And if you see that, it worked as well, right? So node, you install Node, you get NPM. Once you have NPM, you can install Bower. You can also install Grunt NPM. Install Grunt CLI. Now, why CLI? Well, CLI stands for Command Line Interface. Grunt, the actual tool, runs from a specific folder, usually. It's looking for a specific task. CLI allows you to run Grunt from any other place. So we're just going to install it globally for now. Do the exact same thing that it did with Bower. Go to this global NPM registry that lists where everything is and install it. And again, if you see that error, just run it with sudo. It should detect that you already have your password session installed so you don't have to type your password again. And it'll actually work that time. Right? So we now have Bower installed and Grunt installed via Node or NPM, which is installed as well. We're done. You have everything you need to install in your system. So those three commands of double click and exe npm install dash g bower and you can press up if you don't remember right so we're looking for that one sudo npm install g bower and sudo install dash g grunt cli cool so what do they do exactly we've installed things with node but what do they do well node package manager and bower basically do the same thing in terms of installing dependencies but bower again is more client side so give you an example let's go to documents i'll show you how they work in very similar ways say Testing all the things. CD testing all the things. All right, there's nothing in there. So let's do an npm install. Let's choose underscore. Underscore is a great library. So underscore, if you're not aware, is a JavaScript library that's old. Always good in JavaScript. Always good in code in general to have old code that's still around. That means it works. <laughs> and it's been battle tested. And it's been gathering dust that gives it power, right? That's, that's what you want. So when you install underscore, it goes, cool, just like bow or anything else, goes to the git repo that's configured in this global registry and says, I need underscore latest version. They didn't really specify. What's the latest you got? It says, cool, here you go. Download it. If you want to look, I will open that directory for you. And you can see what it actually installed. So we'll open testing all the things. 
and you can see it has a node modules and all the modules that you install via node are in there okay and the package JSON is kind of what node utilizes. so every package or folder of stuff right has a package JSON that describes it okay now you're gonna you're gonna write your own they're usually not gonna be this big unless you're publishing but for local development they're usually just small it says this is my name on my package these are the things that I need to make it work bow or grunt some of the libraries blah 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 right most of the client side stuff you don't you, you don't define in the package so the name the description where it is on git everything else and what version okay that's really what we're concerned about from a package perspective the only thing you really care about is dev dependencies and dependencies dev dependencies means what are the dependencies or libraries that i need to develop locally bower and grunt right and all the plugins what do i need for production you don't need bower and grunt production all your libraries are there in the build folder like underscore backbone angular moment js blah 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 those would be dependencies and actually deployed there okay so most development dependencies are what I need to develop locally. Like, what am I developing locally, okay? So that's Node in a nutshell. That's basically how it installs it, installs those packages. So let's delete this folder and show you what you really would do if you're playing around. If you're playing around, you would actually do a bower install underscore. Now again, notice it's gonna install in the directory I'm currently in in terminal, okay? Bower does the exact same thing about, goes to the registry, looks for bower, you know, underscore. But it's configured in a couple of different ways. Now this dot bower JSON is a little different bower JSON, but they have very similar syntax to package that JSON for Node. Bower JSON says what's the name, what's the homepage for the actual test, but more importantly, what's the version, right? And you'll see this little tilde means you know this version or higher, whatever else. You can get really specific, like greater than or only greater than or less than or whatever else. Tilde just means whatever. The GitHub link of where this package is, so we can get that particular version. Right, so Bower configures that for whatever else. You can install everything here. So let's install what else? Uh, you have underscore. Let's get Backbone. Backbone will also get its stuff as well, right? Now Backbone depends on underscore, but we already installed our own particular version anyway because we want it there. So if you go in Backbone, you can actually see. Cool. It now has Backbone, has all the stuff it needs in there, right? And has all the code it needs. Fantastic, as well as minified and non-minified, so you can actually debug it. Fantastic, we got everything we need, it's installed. We don't have to check any of that in the source control. That's what's really cool. You can install it locally in your machine and Node and Bower and Grunt will install all this stuff locally, you'll be good to go. So that's Bower in a nutshell. Let's talk about Grunt. Grunt, we're gonna have to actually do a project, okay? Because Grunt looks specifically in the directory for a Grunt file to JS. If it doesn't have that, it doesn't do anything. It's not like um, Bower and Node to install things and manage things and update and delete things. Grunt's more like, I have a list of tasks and I must run them, right? And again, they all run on top of Node. All right, so we're gonna show you a simple example of a Grunt project that does basically minification or uglification. What that means is to strip all the white space and shrink the file. It doesn't really uggify it that much. There are certain settings you can do to even shrink the variable names and everything else. We're just gonna do a simple one to minify it. So why would you minify a file? Well, all that white space in, that you put in your JavaScript file adds a significant amount of file size. As your project grows, you can significantly reduce how much file size that initial JavaScript file has. Now we're gonna make the assumption here that you're writing all your code in a single file. You're not using a, a module package system like Yup Nope or Sprockets or Require, right? We're just gonna assume you're gonna write everything in there, but you wanna have a production build or minified build that we actually apply, apply deploy to, on your website is minified, right? Nice and small and runs really small for mobile devices and everything else. So we're gonna do that. So we have our package JSON in a grunt file. No, we're not worried about Bower. Okay, we don't need anything. We're not writing any libraries. We're just writing some simple JS. But the difference is we need package to know what are our development dependencies. Well, to run this locally, we need grunt, right? So it's gonna install grunt the JavaScript and other dependencies locally. We need the plugins. So most plugins for grunt are grunt contrib, which just means grunt contribution. So in this case, JS hints is what we're concerned about. Did you write your JavaScript code right? Do you have any errors? But most importantly, Uglify. We need that plugin to run after it's made sure the file is actually good. Cool, the file is good from JS hint perspective. Good to go. Ship this guy off. Minify it. Okay. So you'll notice that none of these are required for development. They're actually uh, for actually production. They're only for development. That's what they call dev dependencies. If you have a package JSON, npm works differently. You can add additional libraries, and it'll update the file. It won't delete things if they're not there. It'll do its best to rewrite it. So if you add new plugins later, you actually don't have to manually do it. 
Here's what's awesome about package JSON. Once you have a package JSON that describes your project, Node will take care of the rest. So we'll say npm install, and it'll by default look at your package JSON and install all the dependencies it needs, if you do a sudo. Now, let me show you that command I was gonna show you to get rid of all these crazy, crazy silly errors is this. What you can do is give npm rights for that particular own folder. We're gonna say, in my case, I'm Jesse Warden, that's my user. When I do that, what you can do is actually kill terminal. Reopen, we're gonna run npm install. Now you'll notice that there is a package JSON in there, so npm install, we use that guy to configure everything. It'll get all it needs, blah, blah, blah. All the grunts, all the contrib grunt contrib con contribution plugins, as well as their dependencies, and you'll be good to go. And notice it's installed as in grunt. Node modules were good. Nothing to do with Bower. We're just using Grunt to automate some of our JavaScript development. So, as I am coding, I say I am done coding for the day or done coding for the millisecond. So you run something called Grunt. Grunt will look for a Grunt JS file. You could also do a space the task name, but we're just going to do Grunt space and it'll run the default task if you don't provide anything. Again, we only have one task, which is Uglify. Our Uglify task, which is defined in here, looks for a source directory. Where is their JavaScript, right, in our SRC? And where are we going to deploy it to? Our build. It's going to rename that particular uh, package name to min.js. What is package name? It takes your package, right? It assumes you're going to name your main JavaScript file simple.js. And the Grunt file will take that file out of the source folder minify or uglify it, and then put it inside of there with the renamed suffix of .min.js, okay? So when we run our grunt, it'll create the build directory if it doesn't exist, and voila, we have our minified file with the timestamp of when it was done. So you can continue to do this. You can also set up watches, so as you're coding, right, it, as you hit file save, it'll actually change it, minify it, whatever else, and that's cool too. As function, or another function, add, Later edition, run it again, hit up and then hit enter, it'll redo it. And as you can see, it's continually adding whatever else, blah, blah, blah. So this is a simple example of grunt. Again, most of your time is sent in this grunt.js file, adding all these tasks, modifying the parameters, tweaking things to make your build grow and scale as your project does as well. And you don't have to set everything in your package. A lot of mine don't even use the package name. We're actually targeting specific directories. I'm actually offloading a lot of this to require to do some dependency management for both development builds when I actually wanted to bug, right? I want to have multiple files where I can set breakpoints in the actual code. And then when I'm done, it passes all the unit tests and it passes my test of actually debugging some of the functional stuff I have to do manually. Plot out, I can run the, depl the deployment build. It'll minify everything, put it in one file, shrink it down, on Gify, and then shove it in the, the actual build or deploy folder, right? So. Again, this is going to grow. This is going to you know, go from just these one task. You'll have a lot larger tasks later. The grunt can run these automated tasks. And you just keep your terminal open and hit up. Right? If you have a watch, you set the watch. It'll look for that folder to change with all these particular files and do that. And I'm going to show you that in a minute with TypeScript. And it'll constantly keep putting the good stuff out in the build folder so you never have to do it. If you wire that up to a live reload of the browser, you can constantly have your application refresh in an open browser window without having to do anything. Just hit file save and look at your browser window. right? That's how it's supposed to work. That's what's awesome about JavaScript with not having to compile kind of sort of not really, right? So that's grunt in a nutshell, okay? So let's show you a, a more advanced example using TypeScript. So TypeScript is similar to Google Tracer. It's Microsoft's vision of ECMAS 5 and 6, right? Specifically classes, modules, and what ECMA doesn't have is strong typing. Now a common complaint I hear, especially from CoffeeScript people, is how many types does JavaScript really have? Why do we need typecasting? <sighs> I'm not talking about JavaScript types. You build your own types. You build relationships with models and value objects and significant amounts of other custom classes that accept those as parameters, not primitives, but actual composite domain modeling languages that you yourself built to represent your business, a person, a gladiator in a game, whatever. TypeScript will give you those type problems as well as interfaces to define those things to, even for anonymous objects, to help your code scale and compile faster on larger projects. But here's the key. It is a transpiled language. That means it compiles down to normal JavaScript 
and it supports AMD modules. So you can actually define all your classes as normal, right, as any normal language would do, and it'll compile down to modules that work and require. You can then use as is, right, for development build to debug, or you can compile that down using require or other build tools to be minified and file for production builds. So you don't have to use require, which is awesome. Let's go look at our TypeScript project. And again, this is a small, most grown files are with 50 billion tasks. We're just doing one or two. Okay. Let me go to all the things. In this case, it's our grunt tasks, TypeScript example. And I'll put this, um, <clears throat> All right, so let's get rid of our node modules. Let's get rid of our build. So let's look at our package first. And while we're there, let's CD over there. Go up, go down. All right, our TypeScript project requires a couple things additionally. It requires Grunt, obviously, because we're gonna automate this, but it also requires TypeScript. Now I want 8.3, whatever version or around there, that's fine, okay? That's what I want. But I also want the TypeScript helper Contrib contribution for Grunt, which actually allows it to do. And you also know there's two additional things we're interested in here. Well, really three. Watch is it'll constantly watch for changes in my TypeScript code and automatically compile it. Fantastic. Number two is it'll connect. What that means is it connects a local server. So our local server will actually run and connect. You don't have to do a live reload, but for now that's what we're doing. And then Grunt open, it'll actually open that code so you can see it working in the browser if you want to, okay? We're not really concerned about these three unless you're building a large project where you actually want to see it live reload. We're concerned about these three things right here. So we don't have them installed. So what do we do? NPM install. Give me everything I need. Don't pull it from my Git. Pull it from y'all's registered Git. Fantastic. It gave me all my dependencies, right? Now, again, I'm not using Bower for this, but Bower will be used for all your sub libraries, like whether you're doing Backbone or Angular projects or whatever else, okay? So, we're gonna take that JS file and open it up. Now you'll notice this one's a lot larger, okay? So we have a variety of tasks in here. We have Connect. Connect just starts up a local server, so you can actually see it, it's on port 80, I just 8,000 made it up, it's usually for development. And the base directory of where it runs from is our current location, in this case, our source directory right here, okay? So, Connect, it just starts up a server with these options. That's where it connects, and that's the port it connects on. Number two, TypeScript. Our TypeScript is gonna use the TSC compiler. Now, if you don't have TSC, don't worry about it. You could install TypeScript if you want via Node or whatever else, all right? If you wanna play with it. So you say TSC, you have the, the TypeScript compiler locally, you can play with it as well if you want, but we're, we don't wanna do that. We wanna offload all this to Grunt and Node and let it handle all that stuff that we don't have to install things and don't remember that, right? So that's what TypeScript's gonna do. It's gonna take anything that has a .ts suffix in our source folder and put it in the destination folder. Now I need to modify this to not put it in a build slash source, but whatever, you get the point. The options are for the compiler. Number one, AMD modules, not common JS. I'm gonna use classes in different files, right? Like a normal Java, JavaScript, um, ECMA 6, or a Java, or any other language that supports classes beyond JavaScript, right? And modules, and multiple files. See. JavaScript has a concept of modules and classes as two distinct entities. Most other languages don't. <laughs> so I tend to bleed them together, and I apologize. But again, the module is AMD syntax, right? Asynchronous module definition. And the target is ES5. Now you can target ES3 if you're using some features, but it doesn't matter. We're just gonna do ES5 for now. That's what it's gonna compile down to. JavaScript that basically works in all browsers, okay? So it's not TypeScript. And I'm not gonna turn on source mapping because we're not gonna debug it. We're, we, if you're writing TypeScript, I'm assuming you can read and write and debug JavaScript. So we don't need source maps. People like source maps for large applications so they can debug niftily on the line they actually wrote the code. But for the most part, we're not concerned about that. We're using TypeScript for classes of actually getting type definition helping. That's what we're concerned about. Finding bugs early with a strong typing system, okay? So that's, that's TypeScript. This is gonna compile our code and put it inside of their build. Now watch, what is watch? Watch means it'll run as a blocking test. Now what's a blocking test? Blocking means it runs forever until you make it stop. So you'll notice in our register task down here, it's the last thing that happens. The first is connect to the web server, open a web browser to that particular location, and then watch the folder. Whenever it changes, it'll recompile our TypeScript over and over anytime we hit save, which is awesome. So it'll run this TypeScript task anytime. You'll notice that's an array. You could do JS hinting, you could do unit tests. So anytime you hit save, it runs all your unit tests and everything else, 
which is really awesome. And I'll show you in a future video how that can be insanely cool. All right, and then open. It just says open this in the development path of there. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's all it really does. You don't even really need this per se, but I want to show you how it can run. Okay, so we've wrote in our hello world. Now that's our module. We've defined our message module or our domain object, right? A value object that's client only, has nothing to do with server side objects, right? It doesn't represent an object in a database table somewhere. It's just something locally. Our message class has a string and it accepts it inside of the constructor and has a method that returns hello, the greeting, right? So all things being equal, we hit file save when we run this and our grunt task, once we run our, our watch, it'll open up. You can see it's gonna run the local server and let's move our terminal down here. There we go. So you can see it's watching, it's waiting. It's actually a blocking task. I can't actually type commands in the terminal anymore. You could open a new tab if you want and do other things, but we're just gonna leave this up. If you wanna cancel it, you just hit Control C, right? In our case, I wanna keep it up because I wanted to. I wanna show you what's gonna happen here. So let's look at our TypeScript code. We hit File Save. It'll actually run the TypeScript compiler and minify it. Now, since we specified AMD, you can see that the .js file is using the normal define require function with our modules defined within it, right? With all the requires and everything else, which is awesome, right? Everything's there. Further, you can add an additional grunt task once you compile this stuff to actually make it required, which actually puts all those require modules in a single file, minifies, monogifies, and puts them in one big file, but still utilizes the asynchronous module definition of require, if you're familiar with that. If you're not, don't worry about it. This, this is JavaScript that TypeScript generates and it just works, right? But the point is you get you know classes and everything else. So that's the hello world TypeScript and that's the JavaScript it generates from it. Our actual message module, same thing, right? And we can utilize in it. So you can see it worked without a hitch. Well, here's the thing that's cool. Let's break our API and say, no, no, let's just say message as a string. When our TypeScript compiler runs, it says, hey, 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 supply parameters don't match any signature of the call target, which means the parameters are wrong. It's expecting a message object or class, not a, a string, right, of type string. So we say message, hit save, and it works again, done without errors. Mm, and you're doing it. You can see how this is really quick, okay? So that's a, a great example of using Grunt to automate your development processes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start adding tasks on this. You're gonna add unit tests. You're gonna add karma. You're gonna add local server tests. You're gonna add deployment tests where you take your code and put it in different places. Running a variety of different JS hinting and linting tasks with all the parameters that you decide to set with configuration files different. So again, you're checking all this stuff except for basically the build, the node modules, the Bower modules and everything else, right? That is really what you're checking in. So again, conclusion, no node and you install it for the engine to run all this stuff to automate your JavaScript development framework, right? We're concerned about node package manager or NPM. That's what we're installing node for. We need this guy to run and install everything else, okay? The Bower is specifically for the client side libraries. Like, let's close this and say Bower.install Angular, right? It'll install Angular. It'll give us everything we need inside of here. And you can reference it in your index.html to Bower component slash whatever you need, right? The Bower, whatever else. Or you can configure it to rename this to your libs folder. Whatever you want to do, that's cool. Bower configures it, but it's what you're supposed to use for managing that. And you define that in a Bower.json file to configure that. You can find more information on Bower's website, Bower.io, which has all kinds of configuration information on how you can install it with their JSON. So again, you can reference it like this, but what we're interested in specifically is the Bower JSON and how you can configure that for both your d development dependencies and dependencies that you actually run, as well as ignore files, which are similar to git ignore. So you certain files you don't want Bower to really deal with, okay? So that's Bower. And then again, Grunt is your, so Bower is your Maven, right? It manages your library dependencies, so any developer can install them without having to put them in SVN, okay? Grunt is your task automation or, you know, automate everything about your workflow. When I'm typing JavaScript, I want it to automatically compile. I want to verify that whenever I save a file, it's it's well formed, there are no errors before it even goes into SVN. Once I've done that, then I want to run unit tests on it. If those work, I want to run through as much continuous integration without actually checking into the Git or the source control, whatever it is, to make sure that it's good code while I'm writing in real time. All automated, I don't have to think, I just focus on writing code. That's what Grunt does. And that's where you spend most of your time is configuring the Grunt tasks, okay? So again, Node installs all these things. Grunt enables all these things to run awesomely. Doesn't matter what, whether you're coding JavaScript, CoffeeScript, TypeScript, Google Tracers compile, doesn't even matter what browser. 
point is, or IDE. The only thing that matters about the IDE is that some IDEs like WebStorm allow you to actually run these watcher tasks that you can run. So if you want to have a, um, a task that runs whenever you save your SAS file, like you're using SAS or less, or you want to, when you're saving in WebStorm and doing that, you want to automate a lot of these things, even with keyboard commands, you can do that. So WebStorm's cool like that. And they're integrating some of this so you don't have to. But again, the point here is that we're building a system that anybody can use. doesn't matter what IDE they have or what OS they have, it'll just work. Now, I promised I would invalidate this entire presentation. Here we go. You can see I installed some things which are cool. You still have to install Node and Bower and um, Grunt CLI, but you don't have to write all these package JSON files. You don't have to do npm save dev if you don't want to. You don't even have to do Bower install the dependencies that you know ahead of time, or even define them in a Bower JSON so you can go Bower install and have it read your Bower JSON. You can do something called Yaoman. If you don't know Yaoman, it's yaoman.io. It is a front end automation thing. It basically takes templates of common web projects from Angular, Backbone, whatever, and it's assuming you're automatically using Node to configure your entire dependency tree, Bower to configure your entire client-side library dependency tree, Grunt to automate the entire thing, right? And you're going to build a normal JavaScript web application. Yo, it assumes that. So you type in Yo web app and it generates all this stuff for you. So it gives you a great start. You don't have to type any of it. Furthermore, some of it already knows that you want to do Karma unit testing with Jasmine on the back end and all that other stuff where you want to do live reload. You're using CoffeeScript for that particular angle. They've already solved all that. They have templates built in there. You can use them. They're fantastic. I highly recommend you check it out. If you want to go to yaman.io and install their uh, web app, they can use npm install as well. So you just type yo web app and then you install whatever libraries that it doesn't come with or you can just do an npm install or a bower install to read the local generated files whatever else. Most of the web apps will include those in there, but if not, you can do an NPM install. And it'll give you all the dependencies that it needs for that generated app. Is that awesome or is that awesome? So in a future video, I'll go over that, but that's hopefully a helpful crash course into Node or NPM, Node Package Manager, Bower, and Grunt. I hope this is helpful. When you got any questions, hit me up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Contact my email. If you need something built, call me.